What is going on guys, it's Panjano here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Realm Royale. Realm Royale has recently entered the Steam Early Access program in its alpha stage and is very new to the Battle Royale scene. Built upon the Paladins engine by the same developers, and it's something they've been working on for a little while now, and I've been playing a fair bit. With it being so early in development, some people have reported some optimization issues, so this video's main goal is to get you guys the best performance possible on any machine out there, whether it's a high-end machine, low-end machine, medium-end machine, whatever it is you're running on, we're looking to maximize the FPS and tailor your settings towards your machine. So with that being said guys, if you are happy with the results of this video, please do leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously. Feel free to subscribe and press that bell notification on the channel to be notified whenever I do upload brand new guides or to look at my older content, feel free to look at the channel as well. You can find other optimization videos for Windows itself, how to get the most out of your graphics cards and many other guides. If you guys can also leave your results, questions, queries, feedback and suggestions down in that comment section below, it will be deeply appreciated as it is always fantastic to hear from you guys and help you guys out further. And last but not least, for any of you guys who frequently follow my content, you can find my Patreon link down below if you wish to further support me, you can do so on there, but it's not necessary and it's just for you guys out there who wish to further support the channel and the work that I do. And with all that being said and done, let's get straight on into the guide. Right, so like most of my FPS increase guides, what you guys need to go ahead and do is start off by going into the description down below and following the link for the FPS pack provided down below. Click on one of the download links, if the first one doesn't work, click on the second one, download the file and you should be given a file that looks just like this. I recommend putting it onto your desktop. Now to open up this file, you're either going to need a program called 7-Zip or a program called WinRAR. If you don't have either of those, you can simply just go ahead and Google them, install them to your machine, just get one of them, and you're good to go. Once you guys have got one of those programs, you can then right-click on the file, go to Extract Here, and you'll be given a folder with the exact same name as the file before. The folder we're going to be looking at is Realm Royale FPS Pack by Panj. But inside of the FPS Pack, you can then find a Game Files folder, Optimizations folder, Credits.txt, and LaunchOptions.txt. With inside of the credits.txt, you're probably wondering what this might be, and this is just a place where it pays credits and you can find the original download links and original websites for any of the optimizations that are included in this video, like some of the programs I'm going to be showing you later on. So if you wish to find the original download links and sources for those, you can find them out in the credits.txt section. Right, so for the first stage of the guide, what we're going to be doing is actually navigating down to Steam, and we're going to be going ahead and actually booting into Realm Royale. Right, so once you guys have booted into the menu, and for any of you guys who are having black screen issues at this point, and you can't actually boot into the menu, go ahead and press Alt and Enter on your keyboard, and you should be able to see the menu if you are experiencing a black screen issue. Right, so once you guys are on the main menu, what we're going to be doing is actually navigating into the bottom right-hand side, and we're going to be customizing our in-game video options. We're going to be using Direct3D11 by enabling it here at the top. Resolution we can set to our native resolution with inside of our monitors. So whichever that's going to be for you guys, you can set it to the max value. For me, it's 1920 by 1080. But for any of you guys running on low-end systems and ultra-low-end systems, you can actually dial this back to, I recommend, around about 1280 by 720, just like so. But for any of you guys who are on a decent modern PC, it doesn't have to be particularly high-end, I recommend going with your native resolution. Aspect ratio, we're going to be keeping 16 by 9. We're going to be going to screen type and making sure this is set to borderless window, as full screen currently doesn't work on some machines, so I recommend going with borderless window. Resolution scale, now this is an interesting option. Now for any of you guys running on ultra high-end brand new PCs, I recommend sticking this to around about 100%. But for anyone like me and you're looking to get the best FPS possible even on high-end machines, I recommend dialing this down to around about 89%. If you're running on on a medium end system, I recommend sticking this down to around about 80%. For anyone running on a low end system, I recommend setting this down to 66%. And for anyone running on an ultra low end system, I recommend setting this all the way down to 50%. And remember to go up here at the top hand side and set this to 1280 by 720. Anti aliasing, we're going to be going ahead and setting this all the way down to off. Vertical sync, we're going to be set to disabled. World detail, we're going to be setting all of these to the lowest values possible. So, world detail is high for me, shadow detail high, texture detail high. Particle detail high, shader quality medium, gamma is going to be set to a personal preference. This doesn't change the outcome of the guide, and you can set this to wherever you wish to do so. And show live video is going to be set to disabled. Now we're setting the in-game options. Some of them defaultly go down to the lowest value of high, but don't panic. What we can do is actually go into our custom game config files later on in the video, and we can actually tailor these down to lower values than you can actually set. Don't worry, this is completely fine. You won't get banned or anything like that. We're just tinkering around with config files in which we're allowed to do so. So go ahead and just set these all to the lowest value you possibly can, and then go ahead and press apply. And then what we can go ahead and do is actually exit out of our game. Right, so proceeding on from there, we're now going to be navigating into the FPS pack provided, going into the game files folder, and inside of here you should be seeing a bunch of config files. What we're going to be doing to install these is going down into the bottom left hand side, typing in this PC, clicking on this PC, going to the left hand side to documents, we're then going to be going to the my games folder with inside of documents, then going into paladins royale, then going inside of realm game, 
config, and with inside of there you'll then notice all of your default game config files. So what we're going to be doing is opening up the FPS pack, going to the game files folder with inside of there which has your custom game files. What we're then going to be doing is dragging all of these, dragging them over to the config folder with inside of your game files and replacing the files in this destination. Once it's then done you have now installed your custom config files. We can exit out of both of the folders. What we can then go ahead and do is actually navigate into Steam again, go over to Realm Royale, right click on Realm Royale this time, go down to Properties, we're then going to be going over to the Local Files tab found here at the top, going to Browse Local Files, then going into Realm Game, then going inside of the Binaries folder, going down to Win64, scrolling all the way down until you find this Realm application found here, which should have this logo next to it. Right click on Realm, go down to Properties, Go to the compatibility tab at the top, and we're then going to be navigating down to where it says disable full screen optimizations and ensuring that is then checked. Once that's then done, go ahead and press apply. You can also go down to change high DPI settings down here, and also check the option for override high DPI scaling behavior performed by, check that, press OK, press apply, press OK, and you can then exit out of the game files. And following on with the game specific optimizations, we can now go back into the Realm Royale FPS pack provided again. This time going into the launch options TXT provided by double clicking and you'll be given a notepad that looks just like this. At the top here you'll then find the launch options we're going to be using for the game which starts with dash use all available cores dash no man's sky plus anti alias zero. So what we're going to be doing is highlighting all the way from the right hand side to the left making sure it's all highlighted right clicking hitting copy. We can then go ahead and close out the launch options notepad file go down to steam once again right click on realm royale go down to properties and this time we're going to be going over to the set launch options tab. Clicking that once and you'll be given a box that looks just like this. With inside of the blank space here you can then go ahead and right click, hit paste and it should look just like that. Once you guys have got those set you can then go ahead and press OK. And once you guys have got those set what we can then go ahead and do is actually exit out of those property files with inside of Steam and minimize Steam. And that is it for the game specific optimizations. What we can do now for the rest of the video is actually go through some operating specific optimizations to ensure that we're getting the best FPS not just with inside of Realm Royale but with pretty much every single game you play and just further optimize Windows slightly for better game performance. It's very quick and easy to do and I recommend everyone following this video continues on with these steps. So starting off what we're going to be doing is actually navigating down to the bottom left hand side and we're then going to be typing in this PC. This time we're going to be right clicking on this PC and going down to properties. With inside of here we're then going to be navigating to the left hand side to advanced system settings. Then with inside of here what we're going to be doing is going to the advanced tab found here at the top, going down to performance and clicking on settings. With inside of here this will be defaultly set to let Windows choose what's best for my computer but what we're going to be doing is going ahead and actually hitting custom and proceeding to then uncheck everything with inside of here that we possibly can just by simply going ahead and clicking on the boxes. Now the only two options we're going to be keeping them with inside of here are smooth edges of screen fonts and show thumbnails instead of icons. I personally turn off smooth edges of screen fonts as that is a personal preference so you guys can keep this on if you wish to do so. Once those are then set go ahead and press apply and we can then go ahead and press ok and ok. Following up from that what we can now go ahead and do is ensure that Windows is running on the correct power plan for your system. What we can do is we can actually navigate into the bottom left hand side, this time type in power, and with inside of here we're looking for any of the battery with a cord around it icons, just like so, doesn't matter what it says, just click on one of them. Then go to the power options tab found here at the top, go to the show additional power plans, and you'll then find a bunch of power plans with inside of here. Now for the majority of you guys you should only be seeing balanced, high performance and power saver, but for me you can also see I have an ultimate performance power plan. Now for any of you guys who are wanting to unlock this ultimate performance power plan, you can do so by following the video in the top right hand side, it's only a couple minutes long you can go and follow that, enable this power plan if you wish to do so, or you can just go ahead and stick with high performance. So whether or not you want to go with high performance or the ultimate power plan with the video in the top right hand side, I'm going to be going with ultimate performance, so select one of them. Then we're going to be going ahead and hitting change plan settings. You can then set these settings to anything you wish to do so. What we're interested in doing is going down to change advanced power settings found here at the bottom. Going over to hard disk, turn off hard disk after, go to the setting with inside of there, go to the number, double click on the number in there and hit zero. Go ahead and press apply. Scroll all the way down to the bottom to processor power management, enlarge processor power management, enlarge minimum processor state and maximum processor state and ensure they are both set to 100% as well. If they're not, double click on the number again, type in 100, then you can go ahead and press apply and press OK. Save changes and you can then exit out of the power options. Following up from the advanced power options, what we can now go ahead and do is actually do a piggyback step on that to ensure that we're getting the best potential out of our CPU at all times, ensuring that we reduce stuttering and boost FPS. To do this, what we can do is go into the FPS pack provided, go into the optimizations folder, and this time we're going to be going over to the CPU core parking setup. 2110. Go ahead and double click on the setup. Once you guys have done that, the setup wizard will then open up. Simply go ahead and press next. Accept the terms of the license agreement and press next again. Press next and install. 
Once the installation has completed, ensure that the launch option down here is selected and press finish. The program should then defaultly open up. Once the program is opened up, it should look similar to mine, but the numbers will be different. And that's absolutely fine. This program might look a little bit confusing, but all we're doing is actually changing four options in here and we're good to go. So starting off, what we're going to be doing is going to the system power plan found here at the top and selecting the power plan in which you selected earlier on in the video. So if you went for high performance, select high performance. If you went for ultimate performance, go ahead and select ultimate performance. Once you guys are done with inside of there, what we can then go ahead and do is actually go down to the core parking index and this slider will be set either to 100% or somewhere at random. What we're going to be doing is dragging the slider all the way up to 100%. This allows Windows to have access to 100% of your CPU cores. What we're then going to be doing is going down to Turbo Boost Index, dragging the slider wherever it is and ensuring it's set to 100% again. This allows Windows to use 100% of the turbo speed of your CPU as and when it needs it. And last but not least, going over to Frequency Scaling Index, dragging this all the way up to 100% as well, which again allows Windows to use 100% of your CPU speed on all of its cores. Now don't panic, this doesn't mean that your CPU is going to be running at 100% all the time. It doesn't mean that at all, it just basically means that Windows can't throttle your CPU or allocate CPU power to other places whilst you're playing games, which can cause stuttering and overall lower FPS. I recommend that everyone goes ahead and unparks their CPU cores, regardless of what operating system or specs you're running on. Once you guys have got all of those options set, go ahead and press apply. It will then notify you that the changes have been successfully applied. Go ahead and press OK, and we can then close out the program. And for one of the last stages with inside of this guide, I'm going to be showing you guys a very easy maintenance tip to clear out a bunch of space on your PC and free up potentially a load of hard drive space and get your system running faster. To do this, it's actually incredibly simple. We're going to be navigating to the bottom left hand side, this time just typing in percent app data percent just like so and then pressing the enter button once you guys are inside of there go to the app data tab found here at the top click app data once go then go to local scrolling down again until we find a folder called temp or temp double click on the folder and when inside of here you should be seeing a bunch of folders and files your folder is probably going to be a lot bigger than mine depending on whether or not you've been in here before and you could be seeing multiple gigabytes all the way up to around about 30 gigabytes in some cases some people in the comments have let me know and all of that space is just dump files caching files and excess files that windows isn't even using so what we're going to be doing here is navigating all the way from the top all the way down to the bottom no matter how big this folder is for you guys highlighting everything right clicking and pressing the delete button. You'll then be notified that the action cannot be completed for all folders and files. That's absolutely fine. Just simply go ahead and press do this for all current items and hit skip. If that page comes up again, just keep doing that same thing and hitting skip until you are left with just a couple of folders and files in here. For some people, you might have more folders and files left over. For some people, your folder could be entirely empty. Now, the crazy thing is everything that it actually managed to remove from there was just an excess file not even being used by the operating system. Again, your mileage may vary depending on whether or not you've been in here before or how well maintained your system actually is. And it's always fantastic to hear from you guys how much you managed to remove from this folder in the comments section down below. I think the most I've ever heard was around about 80 gigabytes or so and that's absolutely insane. So do be sure to let me know in the comments down below how much you managed to remove. And once you're done with inside of it, you can then go ahead and exit out of the temp folder. I recommend clearing out that folder around about once every month or once every three months, just to ensure that you guys are staying well maintained with inside of your systems and freeing up excess space. Right, so now that you've made it to this point in the video, what we're now going to be going ahead and doing is actually navigating to the bottom left hand side, then going ahead to the power option found here and right clicking, and we're going to be restarting our machines. The reason we're going to be restarting our machines is just to ensure that all of the optimizations have been successfully applied and we're good to go on a fresh boot of Windows. Log into Steam, come back to this video, and we can then continue on. Welcome back to the video, guys. You guys should have now restarted your machines, and we should be good to go ahead with the last step of this guide. And the last step of this guide is actually to go into the FPS pack provided one last time, this time going into the optimizations folder, getting the time resolution application found here, and dragging it onto your desktop. Now, you're probably wondering what this program is and what this program does. What this program basically does is it lowers the amount of latency between your hardware and your system, any game applications you might be running, and the operating system itself, ensuring that they can all communicate with each other at a much more optimized rate, resulting in reduced latency with inside of games, increased FPS, and just overall better responsiveness. It's a program I use for practically every single game I play, and even rendering tasks and Photoshop, just to ensure that I'm getting the best response time possible and the most out of my machine. It's completely safe to use, it's not like overclocking or anything, and I recommend everyone uses it. So to use the program, what you basically go ahead and do is boot into the program before you play your game, Go to the maximum button down here, which sets the lowest timer possible. We can then go ahead and minimize the program. Leave it running down there in your taskbar. Boot up your game or application, whatever it is you're playing, whether it be Realm Royale or something else. Play the game for however long you wish to do so. Once you're then done playing, close out of the game. Maximize the program back down here. Hit the default button and exit out. And it is just that simple to use. 
And assuming that we have now completed the guide and we've done all the steps within side of here, what we can now actually go ahead and do is boot into time resolution, press the maximum button, minimize it, go back down to Steam, go to Realm Royale, and hit play. And there you guys have it, my ultimate FPS increase guide for Realm Royale. Again, do let me know of your results, questions, queries, and suggestions down in that comment section down below as it is always fantastic to hear from you guys. And do remember that you can go back into your game settings and customize them further if you wish to further increase FPS or further increase the visuals. Again, guys, if you are happy with this video and do appreciate the results, please do leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously. Like and share this around with any friends, family, co-workers, or anyone that you might be playing the game with or that you can find can benefit from these optimizations. And also feel free to subscribe to the channel and press that bell notification to be notified whenever I do upload new content. At the end of the video and in the description down below, you'll also find some more guides to further optimize your operating system itself, overclock your graphics cards, and basically just get the most out of your machine without having to spend a penny. And again, for any of my frequent followers who wish to further support the channel and myself, you can do so in the Patreon link down in the description down below, but it is not necessary. And with that being said, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I've been Pangino, and I'm out.